Ever wondered if the Greek hero Hercules, who ran barefoot, would win against the Mongol dictator Genghis Khan? Well, sorry to burst your bubble, but he totally could. In a fantasy land, of course. But in reality, Genghis Khan would easily destroy thousands of men with bare hands in his own version of Troy Story without dying of an Achilles heel. Pretty impressive, right? With equal parts of guts and glory, the mightiest warriors across history have acted as heroes for generations to get inspired. From bloodthirsty fighters in feudal Japan and in Native American empires to noble gladiators who revolted to be freed, sit back as we reveal to you the 10 greatest warriors in history. The fact that no Indian can mention his name without adding the word Maharaj must tell you how amazing he was. You would be surprised to know that despite being physically unfit to be a warrior, he was unstoppable as a true Maratha. With ideals as high as the Himalayas, he fought for the freedom of his people and not just his kingdom. Besides his battle prowess, he was a master strategist. When kings in India were busy resting on their laurels, he kept building naval forts and warships. Because of this, he is also called the father of the Indian Navy. His ingenious guerrilla warfare tactics also earned him the name the Mountain Rat. And did you know, he was one of the very few feminist rulers of his time who actually showed respect to women in those turbulent historical times. Kutulun was the daughter of Mongolian leader Kaidu and the niece of Emperor Kublai Khan. We don't need to tell you how great of a warrior she was because Marco Polo himself had written about her praises in his records. Her father was the opposition leader to Kublai Khan, and as his right hand, she helped him defeat many military bosses in Central Asia and around, and became known far and wide for her combat and war experience. Being the ultimate badass, she raised an army of horses and set out to conquer the world when women were still treated as commodities. Like a woman who spoke her mind, she declared that she would marry only the man who could defeat her in wrestling. But there was a twist. Whoever lost had to surrender a couple of horses. In this sneaky way, she collected about 10,000 horses for her army. In case you were wondering, she did get married, but not much is known about her husband's identity. If you thought Vlad the Impaler is a pretentious name, let us open your eyes and reveal that he was actually who we knew as Count Dracula. Oh yes, he was the one regarded as Lord of the Darkness, who ruled Transylvania, the central region of modern-day Romania. His astounding victories over the invading Ottoman Empire were viewed and celebrated not only by Romania, but the rest of Europe as well. It is even recorded that Pope Pius II was impressed by his skill and fighting spirit. Do you want to know why he was called the Impaler? Well, he showed no mercy to his enemies, whom he impaled, and allegedly drank their blood too. So, it's hardly a surprise that he has been portrayed as a bloodthirsty vampire in popular fiction. Musashi Miyamoto was a known painter, a skillful Japanese swordsman, and an invincible ronin. For those who don't know, a ronin is a samurai without a lord or master. Since his childhood, Musashi was raised and trained by his uncle after his father's death. Miyamoto's father himself was a trained swordsman and a martial artist. Well, as they say, like father like son. The most famous duel he won was against Sasaki Kojiro in 1612 by using his samurai knowledge and foreseeing the strategies of his opponent even before the battle started. He was the founder of the Hyoho Niten Ichiryu or Niten Ryu style of swordsmanship. Miyamoto won more than 60 duels throughout his life and never suffered a defeat, just like the undefeatable hero of a shonen manga. A true samurai till the end, he is said to have died with his cane in one hand and his sword in the other. The Mongol destroyer, as he's known, conquered a quarter of the world's population during his unstoppable reign. His men not only considered him the greatest man alive, but literally God's gift, which is how he received the name Holy Warrior. For all his plunder and destruction for decades across Central Asia, the craziest fact is that history has titled him as the greenest invader in history. 
He actually eradicated 700 million tons of carbon from the atmosphere by killing 40 million people. He was also quite the unbending ruler. Blood oaths, prophecies, and brutal life lessons propelled Genghis Khan into conquest, amassing the largest land empire in the history of mankind. Richard I is one of those rare kings of England known by their honorific rather than their order of succession. He became the main Christian leader against Saladin, the Muslim Sultan of Egypt and Syria, who shocked the Western world by defeating an army of the Christian Crusader states and then capturing Jerusalem. In a rare moment of clarity for English kings, when Richard I realized he wouldn't be able to secure Jerusalem even if he captured it, he signed a peace treaty with Saladin and returned to France. Touche. History describes him as an extremely skilled warrior who showed no mercy to his enemies, with his most famous attribute being his courage and daring. They didn't call him Lionheart for nothing. A hero immortalized by the hit TV series amongst modern audiences, he was undoubtedly the most famous and skilled gladiator who ever lived. Spartacus was the gladiator who finally had the courage to instigate a revolt against the Roman Empire. When Rome was at war with Germany, he decided to leave the army instead of fighting the Germans. As expected, the Roman Empire wasn't happy with this decision, and thus they captured and sold him into slavery. Along with other gladiators, he became a slave leader in the Third Servile War and led a major slave uprising against the Roman Republic. However, he was killed in a battle in 71 BC but his sheer spirit survived through the legacy, as no other individual had ever terrorized the powerful Roman Empire the way he did. Pyrrhus of Epirus was king of the Greek Molossians, and another one on our list who gave the Romans hell. Some historians think the history would have been different if Pyrrhus had not been killed. For a ruler known for his victories against Macedonia and Rome, his death in a street fight in Argos, being hit on the head by a roof tile thrown, is the kind of funny we could all go to jail for. Hannibal Barca, one of the greatest military leaders in history, considered him the best general and the greatest warrior king to ever live. Some of his battles, although victories, were so bloody and terrible for his own men that they gave rise to the term Pyrrhic victory, an expression still in use today and it comes at the expense of great losses or costs. Coming in hot at number two is Leonidas the Brave, the 17th King of Sparta from the Aegead line, made famous in pop culture courtesy of Gerard Butler in the movie 300. His early years aren't well documented, but he is rumored to be the direct descendant of Heracles. During his time, King Darius of Persia had been trying to conquer Greece for almost a decade, and when he died, his son Xerxes continued to lead the Persian army. In the famous ensuing battle, Leonidas tried to stop Xerxes' army at the Pass of Thermopylae with 7,000 soldiers, including the 300 Spartans that made up his personal guard. When some of Leonidas' soldiers betrayed him, he sent away most of his soldiers and kept only the 300 Spartans. The rest is history. Occupying the title of the greatest warrior in history is definitely a name you would expect to see on the list. Alexander the Great is arguably the greatest warrior of all time. Till his last breath, he remained undefeated as a king and as a warrior. The famous Greek ruler managed to conquer most of the then known world. He also fought on the front lines of every battle, unlike many other kings who just sat back and watched their troops fighting. Before his death, he had also planned to invade Arabia, but he fell sick and died in 323 BC. Some historians say Alexander died of malaria or other natural causes. Others believe he was poisoned. Interestingly, he was the first king to introduce Greek and Western civilization to other parts of the world. Did you ever get inspired by the tale of a brave warrior from days of yore 